Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. As the recording of this, it is Sunday, April 14th, 2024. I am in Dubuque, Iowa, right on the tri-state area. Today, I'm gonna to be crossing over the Mississippi River and heading to Galena, I believe it's pronounced, Illinois, just about nine or 10 miles from where I'm at now here in Iowa. I'm gonna be covering a couple of Field of Dreams locations. Now, I've been to Dyersville, Iowa, to where the field and farmhouse is on several occasions. It's not gonna be a filming location video per se, but going over to Illinois to that small little town, I would be remiss if I did not mention that there were some scenes not on the field that were over there where he ends up meeting up with Terrence Mann, the James Earl Jones character. But I wanted to start off here, again, not gonna be a lot about the film per se, but wanted to show something here in Dubuque, which is right over there, that this road here in Iowa stood in for Boston. Who knew? I didn't discover this until late last night. It's gonna be a family day with my mom, my sister, and her husband as we go over the state line, over the, over the mighty Mississippi, the old man deep river in to Illinois. Join me. Shall you? I was over here yesterday and little did I know until I was re-watching the film. Kevin Costner baseball classic. He's done a lot of baseball movies. Of course, Love of the Game, Bull Durham, and Field of Dreams. Again, been to the been to Dyersville many, many times, so we'll not be popping over there today. But right over here is where James Earl Jones's apartment was. I think it was on this side, or maybe this side. I think it was on this side. I gotta match up stuff up. But this stood in for Boston. No, it's on the other side. I see the door from here. So they overlay this with, with where it said City of Boston, where the engine house number one is. And right here in the E Mutes block, E M Mutes block, E Munts block, dated 1888. It looks like a lot of these buildings are empty. I don't even know if anyone's even living up there. The whole building is for at least the entire thing. There's a computer doctor store in this little door right here. Now, the scene is at night when James Earl Jones is standing in the road and the VW bus does a loop-de-loop or turns around. He's doing what Kevin Costner's doing a U-turn and James Earl Jones was standing right here in the road. Moonlight Graham. It was right here. What in the name of heck? And the daytime scenes, that scene was in the evening, the daytime scenes, you see Kevin Costner walking right past here, and this is the freaking door. All right, before lining that up, I just wanted to show across the street over here, across from the main door, this is where Costner's talking to the woman who is kind of yelling at him that she doesn't know where he lives, leave him alone. He says, you're a pest, something like that, paraphrasing. And they had a Boston Red Sox A little sign right there in that window. And this archway can be seen. In fact, you can even match that up right there. The camera doesn't go up that high, but that still looks the same right there. Yeah, take a look at that. What the heck? Who knew? I'm sure someone knew, but that's, that's wild. That is wild. Not in Boston. Then when he walks up to the door, you can see there's two concrete, well, two brick pylon, well, two brick buildings that are separated by a little gap there. And then the door painted black then. Just keep that in mind. There is the farther, you can see the gap a little bit better there. He's going up to the door. Okay, I guess it was maybe like a, a dark blue issue. Different door, but you could see the separation of the building and there was a poultry place to the right, another poultry place to the left. And that was the door that led up to the, the apartment right there. There it is, poultry place in this window, poultry place in the other window, and that's the angle. Right there. How wild is that? There's, there's a little, there's a little gap. Love it. Ah, what's such an iconic film? Anyway, moving on. Also, there's one wide angle where you see all of this in here as well, and you even see the the bus pull up, pulls up right over here continues on, passes that, drops off James Earl Jones. 
Boston? Nope. Iowa, also known as heaven. So if you're familiar with the movie and you watch that scene, they turn this corner, park right there, and there was a streetcar, a cable car going by right here. Quite the set dressing and just, you know, Massachusetts stuff everywhere. Wow. All right, made a little quick commute about three or four blocks from where I just, well, five or six blocks from where I just was. Now, I have not seen the movie Fist, F-I-S-T, starring Sylvester Stallone in many years, probably since the early 90s. However, it was also filmed here in town. I mentioned it yesterday. And I went online, I found a little info, and I found a behind the scenes featurette of the movie, about a 20 minute behind the scenes featurette, and discovered by doing a little street view go around town, that the main focus of the film, Fist, took place right here. And if you watch that behind the scenes featurette, Stallone is sitting on top of a train car right here in front of this building with that open bay door and this building offset just a little bit from the road. This is a deep cut, I know, so I'm not gonna focus too much on it, but wanted to mention it. Quite a few scenes transpired on this very corner, right here. For those who are into it, I think maybe 12 people have seen the film. Now, I think part of the reason the movie didn't do super well is because the original trailer was not very good. Someone redid a modern trailer. You can just search Fist Modern Trailer, and you will see this corner right here with the consolidated sign across here. There's a scene where there's a, some executives looking out that's Stallone's character who's on a, on a flatbed truck right here, and he's talking to some folks. All this matches up, even though it's a lot, a lot newer. All this was here. There was a ramp right there. And this whole corner was used a lot in the movie, just based on what I was seeing with, the, with all the action. The reason I figured out it was this corner, now when you watch the movie or you watch that trailer, you will see that there were, there were metal walkways across one two three four where the workers would go from factory to factory there's another section down there that still has them this one doesn't so it threw me off i thought it was that other block but i realized that they have removed those metal grates and this is the very corner right here and the reason i figured that out was looking at this building when the sign falls you can see that building and this building was here even back in the late 70s the climactic moment when all the union workers are pushing on that metal fencing there with the consolidated sign, it falls over. Doing a little reading, I guess they only had one take because that huge wrought iron metal sign that fell this way, all the union workers charging in, they only had one sign, so they only had one take, so all the extras had to make sure they did a good job. So there's even a clip of Stallone coming around on a truck right here with his bat, you know, beating people and stuff. But all this matches up. This is the corner, right here corner of Jackson Street. All right, from here, gonna go pick up my family. We're gonna cross over the state line, go over the bridge, and do a little small town stuff as well, and I will pepper in some other Field of Dream spots that are over in Galena, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, over there as well, but it's gonna just be more of a family day, small town vibe day, just kinda see where the wind blows. Homework assignment, if you're into fist, fist. Uh, not a lot of people know of the movie, but pretty fantastic that it, most of it took place right on that little corner. Stallone history. Wonder if he even remembers. He probably remembers. I'm sure he remembers. All right, we have arrived in Galena. Galena, Illinois. It's only about 10 miles from where we're in Dubuque, just over the bridge. I'm just driving over to find parking. Really an impressive looking town, beautiful town. It's amazing that this place exists. <laughs> and it's thriving, it's not like all run down and, oh, classic truck alert coming through. Look at this thing, nice. Parking here on Main Street, this little main drag is difficult, so if you, we ended up going a, about a block away, 
I found some parking, $10 parking. But right here, Country Crafts and Sports. This was the movie theater. They used to have a marquee. You could even see kind of where the marquee used to be. And you could see that was the entrance and exit of the theater where the movie posters were. And this was the marquee that had the, the Godfather across it that Costner was looking at and realized he had gone back in time. I think it was 72 he went back in time till. In fact, the car was over here and he kind of took his hand and rubbed off the dirt to see the, the sticker on the front of the license plate. Which means that Moonlight Graham first appears on this street and also is walking on that corner where they had like the great the lighting and the fog and everything and Burt Lancaster is walking that way and then turns around. It's a dramatic turnaround by Burt Lancaster right on that corner. There's a dangling owl up there. It's a bird. Burt Lancaster played the Birdman of Alcatraz in that classic film too, so I'm doing, doing a little tie in there. Get that old VFW. <coughs> oh yeah. The thing I like about this road is how you look that way and it just it looks like a movie set. Because it's the way it turns, it's like a Hollywood backlot where it doesn't just go straight like the sky the the sight line twists and turns so you have a backdrop with the main road okay that's what the marquee used to look like it was the stanley check it out they were playing walt disney's the moon spinners i don't think i've ever seen the moon spinners oh yeah it looks exactly like the theater entrance here take a look at this you go in and you even have some baseball nods here as well all right Right here was where that classic car was with the tag on it that said 72 and he walks over right there, kind of where this car was and like brushes off the license plate. All these windows up here match up. And turns around, Moonlight Graham was walking that way. There's the theater. Yeah, my mom and sister are walking in the same spot of Moonlight Graham. They're crossing the street right there where Burt Lancaster did. He walked right past that where that fire hydrant is. Can match all this up. They had a light right there. In fact, there was like a crane shot from up top showing the light, looking back at the theater, showing the whole road right there. Pretty dang cool. And I think a block or two away is where Moonlight Graham's Doc Brown's. I said Doc Brown. Doc Graham. Yeah, you're stuck on back to the I know. <laughs> <laughs> Time travel, both movies. That's true, do. yeah. Good point. Oh, the little fish, the little fish face. Yeah. It leads to the river fish. Mississippi River. I guess the Mississippi River, that'd be the closest one. A couple miles away. Yeah, such a beautiful town. Hey, look at that. Look in that direction. Look in this direction. This is a one-way road. Nice little confectionery here, established 18, 1974. That's the year I was born. Candy Kitchen. Variety of all types of delicious candies. Log Cabin, fine food and cocktails. It's also an old bank. First State and Savings Bank. There it was, piece of the past. Cigarette sign. You could have a beer sign in there. Next to the sports pub, and up on the side of the hill is the Dowling House, which is the oldest house in town. It says open to the public. That sign right there on the side of the wall, open to the public. This is a wild town. It's just like really cool how it's set up. Oh, there's a horse up there, horse head up there. Speaking of the Godfather, there's a horse head <laughs> right there in that window. Definitely in the upper percentile, it's one of the coolest old towns I've ever been to, especially when it, the fact that it's still thriving, like a tourist destination. There's like a lot of locals and a lot of, a lot of tourists walking around. You know they say money talks. 
mind just waves goodbye. <laughs> Got Big Bill's sandwich shop and Logan at the Logan House, circa 19 or 1853. I keep wanting to say 18 or 90. I'm getting them confused. Here's looking downward on this one-way street. So right here on Main Street, one block. Well, not one block, but a couple storefronts up from 305, 309. Whatever address this is. Is Fritz's Bistro, where Terrence Mann was interviewing the locals of the town. James Earl Jones was right inside this restaurant. It's like a, a whole scene about it. Right inside Fritz's and Fritz and Galena. They're closed. Peek inside, though. That's what it looks like now. I guess evidently it was a bar at the time. It was sitting, sitting at a bar. That is really cool. Yeah, that's definitely it. It's now a chiropractic center, but this is the door the Lancaster and Costner go inside of. Right there. Look at that. How cool. 400. Corner of Meefker and Broadway. In fact, when you watch it, they're walking down from this way. You see that building behind them. I always assumed it was a set they because they walk in they go into another another set basically and after peeking in the window it looks nothing like it does for the interiors and this is actually a little too small well we'll peek inside of here they're not open today pretty awesome Moonlight Graham. So right up at the top of that hill. Also, it was the last film that Lancaster ever did for his passing. And that whole scene about his wish, one of the greatest acted scenes ever. I've seen it probably. I've seen a movie probably 20 times. I've watched that scene 50 times. Just great. Great piece of someone's yelling. I just like this building right here, this side building. All right, stopping into this pieces of the past. Look at all this, like, these relics that are all through here. The old Borden's Ice sign, Coca-Cola sign, a little baby bassinet. All right, we're going to go over here to Galena Roasters. They're going to make fun of us when we walk in here. No, it's actually a coffee shop. Oh, so I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we walk in and they start belittling us. <laughs> All right, I got my coffee. Got a little butterflies on the side. And I want to show something I use to stir my coffee because I use a little bit of cream and sugar in there. I've never seen a wooden fork before. Look at this. It's a wooden, completely wooden fork made out of wood. So I kind of wanted to show that as well because I've never seen a wooden, seen a wooden spoon. Never seen a wooden fork. Anyway, it's made out of wood. It used to be the hardware store. You even have like the key down there, lock and key. Then you got the original tile work. Now it's a little restaurant and a cotton club here. 1112 South Main. A trolley coming through. A trolley car coming through. Oh, it's a tour. It's a little tour. Look at that. We should we should find out where the tour is. I don't know if they want to do the tour, but yeah. Ah, who's this? Who is this guy? Oh, Ulysses S. Grant. Ulysses S. Grant. Interesting. Grant runs for his presidential campaign in rooms 209 and 211 at the DeSoto House Hotel. Just sitting here in Galena with Mr. Ulysses S. Grant. Trying to... He has the watch and the clock down there, but I don't know if he has time for a cup of coffee. You a coffee drinker?
Yeah, I like the, all these little sculptures that you can sit next to, talk to, like a, as if they're really here. It's the ghost of Ulysses S. Grant. This town's full of ghosts. I guess Field of Dreams is a ghost, kind of a ghost story in a lot of ways. Baseball story, a life tale, drama, and a ghost story, and a time travel movie. All right, nice talking to you. There's a celebrity hat store. Think they have Costner's hat in here? Maybe James Earl Jones's hat? Do they either one of them wear hats in the ASA? Yeah. The DeSoto House. Opened in April 1855, five-story, 240 room, was the largest and most luxurious hotel in the West. Abraham Lincoln spoke from its balcony, what, in 1856? And Stephen Douglas in 1858, Ulysses has Grant maintained presidential campaign, the headquarters here. Where's the balcony? Also, those are the stairs right over there. And here's where the payphone was, I think, from Field of Dreams. But those are the stairs. So there's the balcony right there that Abraham Lincoln himself spoke from. That's pretty cool. Abraham Lincoln spoke from that balcony right there, Mom. Illinois' favorite son. I can't think of anyone else from Illinois that is revered as Abe Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Do you know the whole thing? <laughs> so not only there was a payphone right on this corner, but also the Chisholm. Obviously, this is not Chisholm. Fictional. The banner for the Centennial was right there. In fact, you can still match up the little sight line. And after rewatching the clip, the payphone was on that very corner. Camera. It's all one take. You see the. The bus right there, the little RV, not the RV, but the VW bus. I guess it was a Volkswagen. And then it pans down, and right here, Costner and James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones points going towards where the newspaper is. Yeah, just to show a little comparison, there's the there's the stairs. Pretty neat. Again, just showing a few spots. Pretty amazing to think the amount of history that is here. So the camera was facing that way. Payphone was right there, and more importantly, so says the placard, congregation of people were right here on the street corner. While Abraham freaking Lincoln stood on that balcony and gave a speech. Can't match up any photos from that era, obviously. Man. Abe Lincoln history is always so fascinating. Okay, found the trolley depot over here. Again, don't know if we're gonna do this, but this is where it's located. 314 North Main, South Main. Oh, these might be the best things ever. Motorcycles were cool, but I'm talking about these. Coca-Cola ghost sides, delicious and refreshing. That is an epic, bleeding through the brick there, old paraphernalia on the side of this wall. I have a slight infatuation with these all around the country. I love a good Coca-Cola sign, former advertisement left in paint form on the side of brick buildings. A little bit of a sun glare there. As I walk over this way a little more, you'll be able to see it. There's also a chew it after every meal which would have been a chewing gum advertisement right up there. Possibly spearmint gum. Don't know for certain. But this takes the cake. And I love how it has not been fixed up, has not been retouched, has not been repainted since the golden era. Whenever the heck it was plastered up on the side of this, I'll call these Wheel of Fortune moments. Also because not only do you see the Coca-Cola signage, but up top here, it's hard to read what that says. Something about grain and coal. Way up there. Beautiful. All right, there's another one right there. The sun kind of beating across this really 
tough to see what that says. Your guess is as good as mine. It's kind of hard to tell with the sun behind me permeating the brick. This place, this, this town is, is beautiful. There's another one over here. Drinking Emporium. Galena Cellars. That almost looks like an opera house. It's also, I would say it's a busy road, but it's definitely one of the main thoroughfares through town. amongst ourselves and decided that we're not going to do the trolley tour the next one leaves in an hour and a half and it's an hour tour so it'd be a two and a half hour commitment so we're all kind of commiserated and decided not to but it looks like a pretty pretty good time evidently even though there are one two three four five trolleys out there still the tour schedule is a little a little delayed all right there is a walking tour in here the historic front desk and here is ulysses himself 1869 to 1877 the united states president right there and there is a pineapple light and there is the historic staircase. Famous visitors to the town. Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, I should say. Millard Fillmore. Susan B. Anthony, she stayed here. Mark Twain. Theodore Roosevelt. McKinley. Booker T. Washington. Satchel Paige, baseball player. That's cool. Yeah, take a look at this old photo of the lobby right here. This is dated from 1875. Really, it is a fascinating setup through here. How, when you look out this way through this shop, that is the, the main road. But when you walk in, there's like a basement area leading down to this section through the hotel. And they got some old photos, a panoramic view of Galena taken from Shot Tower Hill in 1880. Right over here, you can see what the town looked like then. Well, what room Abraham Lincoln stayed in when he was here? Maybe that one. Bachelors beware. The DeSoto house has fitted up a grand new bridal chamber in the south parlor of the house. It's a corner room facing Main and Green streets, large and roomy and very light and pleasant. If any of our bachelors go and take a look at it, they will be tempted to occupy it very soon. That was posted in 1873 in the Galena Weekly Gazette. All right, we're walking up the stairs. We talked to the check-in clerk. He said the room that Abraham Lincoln stayed in was room 211, out the balcony here. So they've been up here. There it is, the Abraham Lincoln room. That is neat. <laughs> That's cool. A lot of people rent this one out. Man, that is neat. Sorry, she doesn't understand. Oh, I was asking a lot of people to rent out the Abraham Lincoln room. Oh, yeah. That is so cool. And they're, they're all rented. But here, this one here is... Um, so Grant stayed in this room, and then Lincoln stayed in the next yeah, room. Yeah, well, they yeah they spoke from the balcony. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. That is so cool. Can't go out on the balcony. I asked. It's not structurally sound. We also heard that there is a resident ghost here. Remember what the ghost? He said something about there's a portal to the ghost world, right? Is that what he said? Lady in black or something. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a lady in red. 
I just inquired how much it would be to rent the Abraham Lincoln room for the night. About 200 bucks on a weekday, less than $200. You could stay in the same room that Abraham Lincoln stayed in. Guess how much the Abraham Lincoln room is? $300. 200 bucks, 180 bucks. That's not bad. Yeah. There's the nine generals that lived in the room. Okay, so this is the bar he was talking about, right? So where's the ghost portal? Around these corners. Oh, you already looked? I kind of peek, but... There's the ghost portal. There's a ghost in there, Mom. Mom, there's a ghost. She's too busy looking at her phone. There's a ghost in the portal. There's a ghost in there. Look over here, Mom. There's a ghost portal. <laughs> Funny. The ghost is gone. Did you see the ghost? Well, no, I just said that's where she disappeared. Oh, look at that. Hidden since the 1880s and only discovered in 2011. This doorway marks a spot where the elusive lady in black has always been reported to disappear. This is like a little restaurant. And they let you walk all around in here. So you're allowed to peruse around. You can come through here and you can stand in the same spot where this wall was removed and see the doorway and the lady in black right there. That's cool, the portal to the ghost world. Imagine if the ghost of Abraham Lincoln was wandering around, if you're into that sort of thing. It's a ghost hotel. Anything that is, it's interesting how ghosts appear mostly in older buildings. There's like a timeline with ghosts. Once it gets older than a hundred years, the ghosts come out to play. That is so neat, the little mural here on the side. This is a cool, really cool hotel. Yeah, we walked in here. This is called the General's Restaurant. Down here at this time of the day. Not a whole lot going on down in the the bowels of this historic hotel. In the restaurant itself. I do like that. I like that they embrace the history. I think that's fun. Built in 1980 by the state of Illinois. Great River Road. There's a wasp right down there. This is the Galena River that connects with the Mississippi River. And there's Grant Park across the way there. Yeah, overlooking Grant Park here. Oh, this thing's facing right towards town. Through the trees there. Houses up on the hill. Up here at the top of this hill is the Belvedere Mansion. It says open to the public, but they are renovating it. They have not reopened it for the summer. It's still springtime, so I guess certain things up here are not open. This being one of them, they have the ladders all put up. So evidently, there is either a recreation or the screen use prop. Cannot clarify by doing a quick little search. But they have the dress, the drape dress that Scarlett O'Hara created in Gone with the Wind out of the drapes she saw and wore. Would have been neat to see them, but evidently they're inside the Belvedere Mansion. So just across the little Galena River is East Galena, where that mansion is. The Scarlett O'Hara drapes are in form of a dress. Cute little town over here too. Twin towns, twin cities. There it is, the home of General and 18th President.
president, I should say, Ulysses S. Grant. Do we want to stop and get out? No, it's up to you. Do we want to do a tour of it? No, just stop. Just Make sure you get the sign with it. Five dollars to go in. Donation. Got a good view looking over the little Galena River and over into Galena. This is the Crossing House circa 1836. And the old general store right here. Right behind Ulysses' home. So if you needed to grab a little something, <laughs> just pop over a little late night snack. Where is it? Right there. See the general store right behind his house. Ulysses right there, standing on the porch. Oh, there he is. <laughs> There's Ulysses himself. Good eye. It's like lurking in the shadows. Oh, I missed this over in Galena earlier. That's the blacksmith shop right there. All right. That's going to do it for today. A little time with family. Enjoying a quaint town, some filming locations, a bunch of random stuff. Pretty good day. The weather was nice too. It's like mid 70s. Truck's very loud. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. That was a skateboard. The vlog. Are those petunias? In a tree? Is over.